In this video, we'll discuss sequences and functions. So a sequence, or lists, or tuples, are ordered collections of objects. Sometimes you may have already seen sequences given in notation where the same variable is used for the objects, but just different subscripts are used to tell the different objects in the order of the sequence, such as x1, x2, x3, and so forth. If there are two objects, it's called an ordered pair, and we use the angle brackets in order to denote the sequence. So, for example, we have angle bracket A, comma, B to indicate an ordered pair. And if there are n objects in the sequence, we call it an n-tuple. So let's consider some ordered pairs of latitude and longitude for some locations. So we have Los Angeles, Paris, Boston, and Antarctica. And one way to remember that the order matters in a sequence or an ordered pair is to consider what happens when we flip the latitude and longitude of Boston. So the latitude of Boston is 42 and its longitude is negative 71. But when we flip that order, the latitude being negative 71 and the longitude being 42, we end up in Antarctica. That might be a good trick to remember that in ordered pairs, the order indeed matters. Now, if we wanted to have a triple or three tuple of the temperature, humidity, and location, we can use some of the same locations again. And for example, in the summertime, Los Angeles often has a temperature of 86 degrees humidity of 52%, and the location is just Los Angeles. Similarly for Boston, we have the temperature being 71 degrees Fahrenheit, humidity 84%, and the location being Boston. So that is an example of an ordered triple, or a three-tuple. Now we're often concerned about ordered pairs from two sets, and in this case we're considering their Cartesian product of two sets A and B. So the Cartesian product of two sets A and B are the set of all ordered pairs such that the first element in the ordered pair is from the set A and the second is from the set B. So in order to see what this looks like and to also enforce the idea that in sequences and ordered pairs, order indeed matters, let's consider how we can order drinks at a cafe. Now we have two sets. The first set is going to be our choices of temperature, so we can have our drinks hot or iced, and the beverages are just going to be coffee or tea. So now if we were to place an order by giving the temperature first and then the beverage, that would be the Cartesian product of the set of temperatures cross the set of beverages. So in the, that case, we would have hot coffee, hot tea, iced coffee, and iced tea. However, if instead we ordered by giving the beverage first and then the temperature, that would mean that we would be specifying our order from the Cartesian product of the beverage across the temperature. So here we'd have coffee hot, tea hot, coffee iced, or tea iced. Now, it turns out that the Cartesian product is very important because now we can start thinking about binary relations. So binary relation on the sets A and B is a subset of the cross product of A and B. So in this example, we're thinking about a binary relation for students taking classes. So our first set, our set A, will be our set of students. So we have four students, Zoe, Tommy, Jane, and Noah, and we have three possible classes that they can take, CS 104, CS 170, and Math 125. Now our is taking binary relation is essentially mapping the students to classes that they're taking. So for example, we have the ordered pair Zoe, CS104, to indicate that Zoe is taking CS104. And Zoe, Math125, 
to indicate Zoe is taking Math 125. Tommy, CS170, because Tommy is taking CS170. Jane, CS170, to indicate Jane is taking 170. And Noah, CS104, to indicate that Noah is taking 104. So that you can see that those ordered pairs come from the cross product of A and B. And they are indeed a subset of that. Those ordered pairs are such that the first element is from A, the set of students, and the second is from the set of classes. So the is taking binary relation is the set of ordered pairs A, B, such that A is a student taking course B. And as we mentioned, it is a subset of the Cartesian product of A and B. Now you'll notice that we listed all of the ordered pairs in that binary relation, but we also want to give an example of an ordered pair not in that binary relation. So for example, we have Tommy taking CS170, but Tommy is not taking Math 125. So the ordered pair Tommy Math 25, 125 is not in the binary relation is taking. Now we'll see how binary relations relate to function. Now functions, we have them going from set A to B where A is the domain and B is the codomain. Now functions are a type of binary relation and in this binary relation each element in the, the domain, in this case the set A, is associated with one element in the codomain, so one element in B. And we can de denote this as an arrow of A going to B or f of A equals B. And the important takeaway is that every element in the domain will have one arrow coming out of it, mapping to a point in the codomain. Now we can specify this binary relation in two ways, so you may be more comfortable from other sources of specifying a function f as f of Tommy, if Tommy's a point in the domain, equals CS170, but it's also fine to denote this function as an ordered pair. So it'd be the ordered pair Tommy CS170. And that is a way to remember that the function is essentially a binary relation, and a binary relation is a subset of the Cartesian product of the domain and the codomain. And in particular, in this example, it is demonstrating the relationship of subset of the relationship of is taking students. So Zoe is taking 104, Noah is taking 104, Jane and Tommy are both taking 170. What's special about functions is that you'll notice that in the binary relations for a function, every point in the domain, so every element of A must be in an ordered pair to a point in the codomain. So that is what makes function special, and it can only be one such ordered pair for each.